So I thought I would do a very quick review. Um, not really, well, it's not a long-term review, but just an initial review of the Carpuride W702. Lots of the lots of the YouTubers out there seem to be reviewing them. Um, been speaking to GSD321, um, really nice guy, because um, I was having a few issues with it. Um, I'm not going to actually going to do a, a review of the unit, unboxing, etc. That's been covered more than more than a few times by other people on YouTube. Um, but I wanted to just show off my initial thoughts and also my way of mounting it on my 2023 R1300 GS. Um, I wasn't a fan of the original ball mount that comes with it, which I have somewhere here out of shot that is mounted to the back. Uh, I can't find it. Anyway, um, because the front of this bike being a lot more slender than the R1250, trying to mount the, 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 the included ram mount on here was just a pain in the ass. It's it would have so it would have sort of you know stuck right out to about here. Um, so I found a, a couple of companies on Instagram uh, and YouTube who make three D printed adapters for these and the W five hundred two. One being I'm probably saying this wrong, Valiente Motorsport in Spain. And the other one being uh, a chap uh, who calls himself AA, uh, hopefully I'm getting this right, AAGB3D or AA3DGB, which I'll put a link down in the description anyway. Long story short, I ended up going with him, AAGB3D. Um, he sent this out, full, in, full instructions, it arrived in, I think it was just under a week from Spain to the UK. Uh, very reasonably priced and as good quality as the 3D AM mount that I've got for my Garmin Zumo. And as you can see, it basically bolts onto the back and obviously picks up the power from the BMW Cradle. Um, there was a bit of wiring. I had to take the plunge and cut the wiring that came with that came with the W702, which was a bit nerve wracking, but it's only two wires. Um, I could have ignored that and still ran it to either uh, straight straight to the battery, uh, to a USB, or I've got the adapter to actually plug into the uh, BMW CAN bus. But I took, took the plunge, works brilliantly, and I just thought I would show it off and my initial thoughts. So let's get that in there. It locks in nice and firmly. And if I turn the bike on, apologies for the fingerprints on the screen. Okay, the sound is, you probably can't see that, but it says the sound is being played from the iPlay. Okay, so as soon as the CarPlay joined up, the video stopped. Anyway, um, so it works absolutely, absolutely fine. Again, no point in me doing doing any, any sort of CarPlay, you know, um, review itself. It's just basically CarPlay. Screen is incredibly bright, brighter than I thought it was going to be. Um, if I go back to the menu for nighttime use, that will go down pretty low. Um, one problem I had, so I had one of the, I can't remember the name of it, but I had a five inch CarPlay screen on this, uh, sorry, on my previous, on my previous bike. I forget the name of it, but it has a little screw on the back and you can take the screen out of the mount. And I had a problem in that the CarPlay would disconnect randomly, but also the biggest issue was the audio quality, streaming it from um, via my phone to the CarPlay unit and then over the second Bluetooth channel to my headset, which is a Cardo Pactor Bold, was awful. Um, and in the end, I sold it. Um, a lot of the reviews said, there's a similar issue with this, that if you pair your phone 
to the CarPlay unit, um, which by default, obviously CarPlay wants to shove all of the audio over to, over to the head unit. Um, and then you pair your headset to this, that the audio quality wasn't that good, it was a bit choppy. Um, well, my experience was that it was not only choppy, it would sort of, it, it was, was sounding like it was sort of buffering. Um, but the worst part was when somebody rang me, which I'm a blood biker, so I need to answer calls and make calls while I'm riding. I could hear the, uh, the other person perfectly, but they said they only heard like every third or fourth word. I tried all of the usual, unpaired everything, reset everything, yada, yada, yada. Um, even did what what GSD321 said in his review, which was basically, don't pair the headset to this. Pair the headset directly to your phone, as you normally would. I had two issues with that. Number one, because CarPlay wants to shove the audio over to this by default, I couldn't always get the audio to come out of my headset because of the very nature of how this these work. But even if I could get the audio to come out of my headset, I could hear the audio playback perfectly. But I still had the issue with that when speaking, people couldn't hear me. And it's all fine uh, when it's just my headset, my phone, when I pair everything via the, via the bike even. Um, so anyway, I got in touch with Carpuride. Um, they took a few days to come back to me. They came back to me with... Uh, a software update which um, I noticed on the videos of the review units they look like this um, but mine came with an older style of interface the home button looks or look sort of different these icons were laid out slightly differently but more importantly I didn't have this audio output option which I've got set on that and that for me was the key by default it wants to go to go to BT BT Trans uh, and send the audio to your headset on a second Bluetooth channel. This way works perfectly. I've used the unit as uh, a sat nav uh, a couple of times now. It has been absolutely flawless, easy easy to read, and as good as the CarPlay built in to my car. Um, that is the only issue that I've had that appears to now be resolved. I'm very happy. So yeah, those are my, my, those are my initial thoughts and mm, semi review of the copyright W702.